Hi, I'm Tyson Franklin, and welcome to this week's episode of the Podiatry Legends podcast. With me is a good friend we met in 2012. He is the owner and legend of Foster Web Marketing. It is Tom Foster. So, Tom, how are you doing today? Hey, buddy. I'm wonderful. It is 4 o'clock p.m. here on the east coast of the United States in northern Virginia, Alexandria, 20 minutes outside of D.C. <laughs> we are just saying before that I said Alexandria, that's right. I said that's the place where a lot of the stories of The Walking Dead took place. And then you told me, I've never seen an episode. Seen My, are you in for a treat I know when all you about start? it. I just haven't never watched it. So Foster Web Marketing. When did well, let's let's go back a little bit. When did you kick it off? What's it all about? And today we're talking about a topic called uh, story brand websites. Yeah, I'm gonna go over kind of the new way to build your website. Um, but yeah, we started way back. Uh, well, I started this by myself way back in like 1995. Uh, is when I kind of got started doing this, building websites. And and it's, and it's predominantly for lawyers and podiatrists, isn't it? Yeah, but it, it didn't start out that way. I was doing, yeah. you know, I was, it was a hobby. Uh, but yes, in about 2007, I was introduced to uh, Ben Glass, uh, who's a great lawyer and a um, good friend that we kind of all started great legal marketing together, a big lawyer conference and started doing websites for many lawyers and then the other partner that was in great legal marketing was uh ram jackson yeah and it was ben and ram and me and we put on great legal marketing for years and years ram left great legal marketing and started uh top practices so that's where we met yeah that is we you met in met. nashville 10 years ago in Nashville. That's right. At top practices in Nashville. And you came all the way from ac across the pond uh, because there was nothing like it in Australia. And you were running a very successful podiatry clinic practice. Yeah. And um, you had, you had, you're a very natural and smart marketing person as it is. Um, you're very, charismatic and funny and and you got a lot of great i'll, I'll take you know, all those compliments thank you very much yeah <laughs> I, i'm sure you were a good doctor as well um you know you you put that into your practice and you hired us to be your web company right there um soon after we met and as a result you grew your practice to enormous greatness using the website and and the way that like i remember your office was so cool um the way that you had it the way you had it painted and all that you know it was a very inviting place and uh, you ended up selling it and um doing very well for yourself and then yeah. you started this and here we are the rest is history yeah and then started this podcast the we sort history. of um yeah we've gone past the 300 episodes now which is that's cool. fantastic yeah, which was a big effort. When I did, when I had the first podcast, It's No Secret with Dr. T, I remember when we hit 200 and I was like, oh, wow, that seemed to take so long. But Podiatry Legends podcast going past 300, it's just gone so oh, fast. Do you, put, do you put them out every week? Uh, yes. So usually it's one episode a week, but every now and then I might have a, a period for a couple of months where I might do a, a solo show like on a, a yeah. Yeah, every second week for a couple of months because I might just have a few thoughts that are going on in my head or I might be at an event, a conference, and I bump into someone and I just happen to have my recording gear there and we record it and it's so good. Yeah. I'm going, I'm not hanging on to this. This has got to, this has got to be shared. People have got to listen to this. And, and that's, that's how, right. how, like you've been on the podcast before, which is why you have the Podiatry Legends podcast hat. That's right. I'm wearing the brand. And when we were in... October recently at Business Black Ops, we just got talking again, and I thought I've got to get you back on. And that's how yeah. the, that's when you mentioned the whole story brand thing, and I went story yes. what? I went story what? Right. And, yeah. Um, so what I've got is I've got uh, a, a comp, which is a, a before we uh, do any design, do any. Uh, coding for a website, we create a comp. 
Um, and that's what the coders use to code the website from the design. So I'm going to show you guys, and not many people have seen this. So this is like, I don't want to say it's top secret, but this is Andrew <laughs> Schneider's yeah. um, new story branded website. This is probably his fifth redesign, if not more. Andrew Schneider has been with me since uh, for, I think, 15, 16 years. Well, Andrew was and, one of the um, earliest podiatrists I had on the podcast. I have my list right here in front of me. And he, I think he yes. was uh, episode 10, running a successful solo practice, which he'd been doing for 20 something years. And, yes. and he just said he has no intentions on never employing another podiatrist. He just. Nope. He's his own guy and he's got. Loved like working by staff. himself. Yeah. Yep. And uh, he has done an incredible job. I'm going to show you because I love showing this off. He is, he's very smart like you. And uh, he basically took our system, which is DSS. And I'm going to, can I share my screen? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll just let people know if you're I'll listening do. to the audio at the moment, you probably, <laughs> you won't ah. see this. Ah, but it doesn't matter because we're doing video as it. well. Well, it doesn't matter. You got to come see the video if you're listening to well, it so, on audio, right? Yeah, if you're listening to this on audio, I suggest going to my YouTube channel, Tyson E. Franklin. It's a bloody good channel, if I say so myself. And yeah. check out this video and move to this part of the recording, and therefore you'll get to see it. But if you're still just listening to it on the podcast and didn't get that far, then um, that's all right. You'll be fine. Yeah. You know, just We'll still talk you through it. Yeah, we'll talk you through it. And, um, Tyson, you might remember your old friend. This is DSS, the I software do, that runs all the I websites. do recall that, yes. And uh, just for your, your listeners and your viewers, DSS is the software system that powers all the websites and um, is a content management system, a, a customer response management, or relate, I'm sorry, a customer relationship management tool, CRM. It has lead management, has SEO tools, has everything that you need all in one, easy to get to place. But I wanted to show this is uh, how many users Andrew's got coming to his website a month, 11th, almost 12,000. Uh, and this guy is a solo podiatrist in Houston, um, in Tanglewood. His, his website is right here. Yeah, that was a part. That was what one thing I did yeah. when I first met all you guys, and you were doing a lot of websites for a lot of podiatrists. And I remember Andrew, which is when I started the podcast, I want to get him on because I was just astounded. Where most podiatrists, it's just in the head. I have a clinic. I get really busy. Oh, I must employ another podiatrist. No, I don't need to employ another podiatrist. I need to improve what I'm doing, charge more, have a better clientele. And he's just done that year after year, decade after decade. And he probably goes to Disneyland more than any other person I know. That you need, I just was with him last week at, at uh, the AAPPM in Fort La Lauderdale. And Andrew's the president of that as well. Yeah. Um, so it, it just goes to show that it's not always about adding another practitioner. It's about refining what you've already got. Right. And, and doing it even better, which, yeah, sort of what you've done. With, yeah. It's no different to your websites as the years have gone yeah, on. I mean, like it is a decision um, and, you know, a lot of doctors are very happy with just themselves. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of doctors like that. We have other practices where there's, you know, five, 10 doctors there. And, the, um, and just, I'll just point something out to people too, <laughs> because on this podcast, I mentioned podiatry clinic websites a lot, which is, website company precedence with Nikki Jerd and you know Nikki yeah so and that and people will be going oh this is really weird you you've got Tom Foster with Foster web marketing websites and then you have Nikki Jerd with podiatry clinic websites and I think Jim McDonald's been on here and he he's talked about websites but I think you know everybody suits a different type of person and I know that I've worked with you, I've worked with Nikki, and I just know different people are going to be you know, different horses for different courses. So, and you're all good friends of mine. Yeah. And you're right. Different flavor for different folks. You know, we're really a, uh, primarily a, we'll teach you how to do this. Uh, yeah. We'll teach you how to, you know, do the content. DSS allows you to update everything yourself. It's, it's not WordPress. It's a proprietary system. Um, it's very secure. We're more expensive than most, probably. But yeah, we're 
We also do services for people that don't want to do it themselves, meaning we do the content and the SEO and all that. But let me, I'm going to show you some tricks uh, yes. that, that Andrew has. But yeah, you're right. It's just Andrew and he's got three people working with him. I'm going to show you, this is his existing website. Yeah. Uh, this has done a great job for him, but, and he treats a lot of different conditions. He's very specific. And each one of these pages has, a you know, a good amount of content on it that draws the search, you know, people that type in search. He's getting search from all over the world. People come to him from all over the world. Yeah. Because they find him. And I'm going to show you his big secret in a, in a minute. Because but... I find that I find nothing more annoying than when I go to a podiatrist website, somebody might reach out to me and go, oh, Tyson, yeah, I know you do coaching. Can you help me with this, this, and this? I go, yeah, not a problem. First thing I do is go to the website. And it's surprising some don't have a website, and it still just surprises me. I just met a podiatrist that doesn't have a website this past week. Yeah, and, or I'll go to the website, and, mm -hmm. and I'll go, let me guess, this website went up in yeah you know, 2nd of May 2016. And they went, yeah, did you know that? I go, oh, because there's four blog articles on there, all of the same date. So I assume that was the date. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that's the that's date right. it went up because that's nothing right. has changed since then. And I go, in your photo from 1985, yeah, you probably got to update that. So it's yeah. true. And, and, and that's what your website is. Uh, you need to feed it. You need to feed your website with content in order to be found for all those long tail and short tail keywords that people type in Google to find you, you know, for heel pain or plantar fasciitis or athletic injury or whatever. It's funny, this, this page is his number one page. Yeah. This is a painful bump, no more bump on top of the foot. So this is his number one visited page. You know what's funny not. about that particular title is I was only talking to my mum last week and I don't always look at her feet. Yeah, you know, she has shoes on when I'm down there. And she sent me a photo. She said, can you tell me, I was wondering what's this bump on the top of my foot? And that's exactly, wow. that is exactly the question that she asked me. So, you know, if that's his number one page is that is being people, visited, yeah, exactly. it's a question. And that was something that Rem Jackson, you know, I picked up on Rem in 2012. He said, whenever you're writing articles or whenever you're doing anything, is answer the questions that are going on in people's heads. Yeah, let me show you a tip about that. So if you type into Google, why do I have a bump on my foot? This is called long tail, okay? Yep. Now I'm typing this, and first of all, it's going to give me a general answer um, and pull from this verywellhealth.com. This is the best optimized page for this question in the world because I didn't specify, you know, where I was coming from. Yeah, It's not giving me any local stuff, so it's just giving me general stuff. But what this does is this gives me one, two, three, four other content ideas that uh -huh. I can write for that people are actively searching in Google for these. So this is what Google's telling you. Google's telling you, hey, people that search for this also search for this. And I'll just read out the answers for people listening to this. Why would I yeah. have a, a lump on my foot? How do you treat foot bumps? Can foot lumps be cancerous? Interesting question. And how do you mm -hmm. get rid of a knot in your foot. So they're the four things that were related to that question that you actually typed in. And the whole point is, oh, that's one of my clients right there, Ryan Berg. That's one of my clients. That's great. He's coming up no, number one for the world. And he had six um, reasons why you have a bump, a lump on the top of your foot. Right. So that's just a little trick that you can do for all of your practice areas. Well, there was um, another, there was another thing that you, I'm pretty sure you showed me was if you were trying to come up with topics, go to YouTube as well. And you just type oh, a similar question yes. at the top in the YouTube search box, and it will give you a massive drop down box of all the things that people are currently searching at the moment. And there'll be like 15 different things there. And that gives you an idea of yep. they're the topics that you need to write about because they're the things that people are searching for on YouTube. So you could write an article and if you wanted to, you could also shoot a video. Now, I think that you should get Dr. Snyder back on your show to talk about his YouTube channel. That is the secret that I wanted to like share. He's got uh, 
28,000 subscribers to his podiatry YouTube channel. He has 240 videos. They're very well done. He does it himself and he does everything himself. Um, and he's got a system to do it yeah. that uh, he shares with certain people. Like some of these, like 2,000 2, views, don't let a broken pinky toe slow you down. See, these are all topics that he got from exactly what you're talking about. I'm yeah, gonna... well, like I've mentioned it before on this podcast that I did a 90-second video that's still on my YouTube channel, How to Strap Your Heel for Heel Pain. It goes for 90 seconds, and it's at the moment, it's about 89,000 views. Yeah, and I know he's got one that's got an, over a million views in here. I'm looking. But uh, I recommend that uh, you check out. Oh, there we go. Shows. One million views. What you can do to treat yep. peripheral neuropathy at home. One million views. One million views one year ago. It's only about a million more than most of my videos. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's all he's doing. Like He's just a one-man band doing his own videos in, uh, in Houston, Texas. See, and that's the part that I find incredible when... I'll talk to podiatrists and they go, oh, I haven't got, I haven't got time to do this. Or, I haven't got time to work on my website. I haven't got time to shoot videos. I haven't got time to do marketing. A and they may have another person employed or they're working by themselves. I'm going, get rid of the shit work. Get rid of the work. Th there'll be certain types of work in your business that you do not like doing. Nobody in your business likes doing. You keep employing people to do the work and then they leave because they don't like doing it. Yeah. So there's a hint yeah. there to get rid of that work and let, so I always think there's a, there's a, a podiatry, uh, like evolution and cycle through your career. You start your clinic, you see everybody, anyone that breathes one leg and they, they've got a heartbeat that's good enough and they can pay your bills, hopefully. But then as time goes on, you should be letting those people go. You should be letting some of the nursing homework, some of the home visits go for the new guy yeah. who's coming through. Because if, if you keep trying to hang on to it all, the new guy will go, okay, well, I'll just skip all that. And they end up with a better clinic than you a lot faster because there's none of that shit work there to, to keep them um, distracted. Yeah. And you want to focus on your perfect patient always and refining who your perfect patient is. And your perfect patient is, it's different for everybody. And you have a perfect patient really for each service area that you provide. But there's certain criteria, and you know this, this is... Um, the avatar creating the avatar Tyson yeah um, and creating the perfect patient you know who do you help for heal pain what what's and this is your per, your avatar that walks into your clinic and you love them and so that's who's in your mind how old are they are they male or female or whatever um, are they uh, 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 where do they live what's their location um, what do they do for a living these kinds of details are really important because this defines how you're marketing to them, how you're marketing, um, and then how you help them uh, solving their heel pain, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, and then how do you do it by doing these things, whatever you do uh, to solve their problem. And even if is the last part, which is really important, you want to you want to think about all their objections. Mm. All the reasons why they're going to object to you, you know, even if you've seen another doctor, even if you've had surgery, even if whatever your perfect patients have told you is what goes in this. Yeah, even if and you think you've tried everything before. Yeah, even if you've tried everything before, that's classic. And so then you write content, right? You start with what are the frequently asked questions that these perfect patients ask me? or my, my assistants or people in the uh, clinic and write those down, you know, and just keep a running list. And that's where you're going to write content. Just like I showed you in Google. Yeah. That is Google's suggestion, but that is going to be more general. Um, you want to make sure that, and that's what you do those after you do your avatar FAQs. So your top FAQs for each one of your service areas and then write content for them. And you will get traffic for that you will get the same kinds of people. If you haven't gotten the book, Building a Story Brand, go get it. 
and you can get it from Amazon or wherever you, you get books over there. You get it from Amazon too? Yeah, Where yeah, Donald them? Miller. Yes, in Australia, we have Amazon as well. Oh, they bring it on the next okay. convict ship. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right. so they're lo loading them uh, off they they bring off the amazon uh boxes as well but anyway it's uh, donald miller building a story brand yep you want to get that um and read up because it's great and i'm going to show you i showed you andrew's old website that one that's up now that is getting replaced with this and this is a comp um for us story branding his homepage. it's just his homepage. Yeah, And the way that uh, we build these in, are, is in panels. So we stack the panels. And so when you're doing story brand, the main theme of story brand is your patient is the hero. And uh, your patient has problems and issues that need to be resolved. And it's the classic story. Any kind of like action story, Star Wars, you've got the hero, which is Luke Skywalker, and uh, he has a problem that needs to be solved, right? And in comes the guy. Yeah. So you are building this in a story-like way because that's how people read their your website. So first of all, we hit them right away. Don't let foot pain hold you back. We know that that's one of the big things that they have to get their attention. Life without pain starts with your foot freedom plan. So we're branding your foot freedom plan as this easy thing to get done. It's easy. Wow. Okay. Look, look it's in quotes. <laughs> uh, request, you got multiple calls to action. Request an appointment here. Request an appointment now. You want to make sure that you have multiple calls to action. So that's one panel. Then we get this panel, which is um, uh, imagine having no limits, be confident in your abilities, no more pain in the morning. So what you're hitting on is what they want. So you hit on immediately what they want, not what you do yet. Not yet. They can pull that down from navigation, by the way, if they just are, are jumping the gun. Yeah. But right now on the homepage, you're telling the story. So they're like, yeah, that's what I want. And, and, and these are the pretty much the primary complaints of your perfect patient. Pick the top three. And make cool headlines out of them. Um, and this is what what people say to Andrew. They want to be more confident in their abilities because of, like, he treats a lot of athletes. They want to be pain-free. And this is, that's no, no more pain in the morning. And that is specific to heel pain. Because everybody knows if they got plantar fasciitis, heel pain. First thing is they get up in the morning, it's like walking on glass. Yeah. So that's exactly what they're taught, they're, they're getting. And imagine having no limitations. So like my feet aren't going to stop me. And so then what are the stakes? If you don't do it, you have to remind them if they don't make an action move here, what is going to happen? So don't risk allowing pain in one foot becoming a problem for both feet. Don't make it worse. Letting foot pain lead to a painful problem in your ankles, knees, hips, or back. Missing out on doing what you love just because of foot pain. So real quick, Boom, what's at stake here if you don't do this? Then, oh man, step beyond life and celebrate life unstricted. Look at these happy people, these happy cured people. All right, so exceeding physical goals, having pain-free mornings. Once again, this is a, an embellishment of what his perfect client asks him and what they talk about. So boom, 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 boom. Um, and these link obviously to internal pages discussing yeah. these things, right? Request an appointment right now. Then we're at, let me talk about the doctor. Most websites lead with, let me talk about me. Because you're trying to you're trying to make yourself the hero of the story. You're not the hero of the story here. You are the guide of the story. You are the guide that's going to get the hero, your patient, to where they want to be, which is ultimately success. So... The next thing that you want to do is make it so it's so easy. Remember the foot freedom plan. Here's the foot freedom plan. It's four steps, man. Who doesn't want to do that? Yeah. So one, schedule a uh, schedule, easy. Get a consultation, get evaluation, and then get on the foot freedom plan. Simple steps. Boom. Make it simple. And then once again, remind and, and, and that's and I'll just point that out too. Patients yeah. love to be guided on what to do next. If you, yes. and that's why whenever I hear somebody say, I know like I've been to a physiotherapist or a chiropractor or some other service and they go, oh, just see how it goes and get back in touch with us. And you're like, 
I know how it's going to go. It's going to be crap. But because yeah. you've, you're leaving it up to me, it could be months before I ever come back, if I come back, because in the meantime, I might talk to somebody else who has a physiotherapist who actually rebooks them and I'll go somewhere else. So I think it's really important for people to remember patients want to be guided. What do I do next? What is the next step? They constantly want to know what the next step is. So this is great. Step four. That they need, they want to plan. And that's a big takeaway here. You're a hundred percent right. They want to plan. And this was echoed by many doctors at, at AAPPM, which is, um, American Academy of Pediatric Management. Thank you. Practice management. Yes. Yes. So really <laughs> it's all about the business of podiatry. It's not a scientific uh, conference. It's more about the business, how to make more money. And, and uh, one of the big things was give them a plan. Okay. So you're right. And then we remind them what's at stake if they don't do anything. So here's another what's at stake panel. Um, aren't you tired of having to slow down? Some people don't know that there's anything they can do about their foot pain. They just live with it and hope it goes away. Hoping doesn't work. Understanding your condition is the first step. Then we will follow it with your foot freedom plan. In quotes again, this is the plan. So easy to do. <laughs> That's not the end of the journey. It's just the beginning. You get to write the rest of the journey. We'll be here to support you through it. And then if what that I, What I like about this so far too, is there's not a lot of text to read through. People can skim through each of these panels and very quickly read it. They're not getting there on a homepage and having to read tons and tons of, of text. So sorry, keep going. Yeah, no. And let's talk about that for a minute because your homepage Everybody focuses on the homepage, you know, and they try to optimize the homepage for too much. When you have your internal service pages that you can optimize and those get more text, but your yeah. homepage people, that's your brand page. And most people that are going to your homepage were referred like go uh, to Andrew Snyder, Dr. Dr. Andrew Snyder is amazing. And they're going right to the homepage, you know, because they're typing in Andrew Snyder, DPM, um, and they're going right there. So you're right. There's not a lot of text heavy. We're trying to convert them, those people that are coming there, and they're hot and bothered. Um, and, and it's also so one of those things, too. And I've mentioned to a lot of people that a patient may actually go, yeah, they might be referred by a friend and say, hey, you should go and see, say, Andrew Snyder, for example. They make the appointment, but then between making the appointment and actually going in there, they're going, okay, now I need to stalk him to make sure I've made the right decision. So they're yeah, going to yeah. go to the website and they're going to check it out. If the website is looks good and is guiding them through, hey, this is what we're going to be doing, they're, they're going to be thinking, I've made the right decision. Whereas they go to your website and it was done in 2015 and it's got a photo from 1985 and it just looks dodgy and outdated. They're sort of going to be thinking, oh, right. well, geez, I don't know if I've made the right decision here. And then they may not turn up cancel at the last minute what you want to have happen is if they book an appointment you want to have your email campaign your drip campaign automatically start on these people that book an appointment all about the plan yeah remember remind them they're going to get a plan how easy it is you're so excited to see them testimonials from other patients that have that have gotten the same kind of thing um, and you want to remind them when their appointment is, by the way, you do an excellent job at that with your podcast. I got multiple reminders about the podcast, which I thought in <laughs> email, which was great. Um, but that's, you're right. And people need to be reminded what, what seven times over and over again. So yeah. you hit them up, boom, 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 make sure you come to your appointment. We're really excited to see you. And if you can text them about it, even better. Okay, so this panel is just a list of everything that he does. If the other stuff didn't catch him with links to those pages. Um, and then here's more in a different state in a different kind of way. And these are also pages on his website. Women's foot health, diabetic foot care, the child's foot, custom orthotics, shockwave therapy. So these are different things than running injuries, triathlon injuries, sports injuries. So it's just- Yeah, so the people so the people listening to this, you had one panel that had certain problems and the next panel is, do you struggle with? And these are a lot more like injury type things. Whereas the yeah, next one- Yeah, heel pain, right, bunions. Yeah. 
um, bone spurs, uh, ingrown toenails, like the stuff that like we'll search for, um, that, you know, like I need my ingrown toenails taken care of. And then this, this other panel, which is a different set of require needs, um, which are a little bit more in depth. And these are yeah. specific searches. So like the shockwave ther therapy, platelet rich plasma, PRP injections, swift treatment for plantar warts. The next panel is really just your reviews. And so that's a panel of Google reviews, what our patients say about us to uh, reinforce you want to work with them. So it's what, what other people say about you. And yeah. I recommend reviews. You can also use testimonials here. Um, different then, countries have different rules around that, but that's right, okay. Yep. Right. And then this next panel is if you're not right, quite ready to schedule an appointment, you can download one of our free eBooks. You don't think the books work. Look at all these downloads. And then, it, then he puts a drip campaign on them for the people that downloaded the books. Yeah. So it's then he stays, camp. stays in touch with them over a period of time. Right. And you know, those are leading questions that will have in those emails that is designed to make, get them to make an appointment. But this is the difference between having a, like a marketing plan, like using your website as part of your marketing strategy over a, a period of time compared to some podiatrists will go to a, a weekend workshop. Swinging it. Oh no, they'll go to a weekend workshop because there's someone that's going to show them how with one text message, they can get 50 new patients yeah, next Monday. And you're like, oh, that really frustrates that stuff. It just frustrates yeah. me when I see that because one, the rarely are the new patients means because you can't, you can't just send text messages out to randos. So you've got to, right. you're, send, you're sending them to existing There's patients. There's laws. There's laws against that. Yeah, <laughs> I know. So when I see all that stuff and I go, and then you see, you'll see a photo of, yeah, 50, 60, 100 people at this weekend event with this person. And you sit there just shaking your head going, it's just tactic after tactic. There's no like long-term strategy that it's, that's really planning out attracting patients and then nurturing those patients when they actually uh, reach out to you. Yep. We're sharing some secrets here today yeah. that hopefully people will do and um, not run to those shiny new objects that don't really work. Marketing is hard. I know we've been doing, we got over 50 podiatrists um, and we help them with their marketing. This panel right here, that if you can see it, it's the not ready to schedule an appointment, download the free books or, or check out our YouTube channel. Now I showed his YouTube channel, but that yeah. links to his YouTube channel. And by the way, all his videos, all the descriptions of his videos, they link back to his website and he's got, look, he's got refer Schneider. So he knows um, where they're coming from. That he knows that they're coming from his YouTube channel. And his descriptions are pretty vast. I like the way he's got the link where he's got his YouTube channel and everything written. He's got the main yep. link is in the first line. Yes, and, then and that's the by design. Yeah, then the information is after that. I'm going to take that on board with my own videos. Yep. You start putting the link link first. And make sure that your your content in here is optimized. A lot of people just throw up a video and don't even put a description or, or you know, like one sentence description. It's a wasted opportunity. Okay, so video library. This is These are his YouTube uh, videos right here on his website. Um, if you click on those, it'll go right to, well, but they're on his website too. And we just embed the YouTube videos. So you can either find them go into YouTube or find them on the website. Yeah. Then we call this the lunch box or the dump box where everything else goes in. So now we're in the, put the everything else in there. Cause if we haven't gotten them by now, you know, we're going to hit them with a couple more things. Here's content. So this is the blog you... section, frequently asked yep. questions, FAQs, articles. articles yeah. What do you think when we were at uh, business black ops and they had the SAQs should ask questions? Yeah. That, I thought that yep. was a great idea. It is a great idea. And yeah, they, these are questions you um, should be asking. And you want to link them to the frequently asked questions. And so yeah. all your frequently asked questions, you should introduce that. People ask this question a lot. You know, why is my foot, you know, feel like I'm walking on glass? But really the question is, you know, this. That's the question they should be asking. You want to answer the FAQ, but then provide the um, should ask questions. Okay, then we have our map so people know where he is and then uh, another contact form. And then that's that's that. 
So the story the brand story. Yeah. of what you're talking about is basically looking at the homepage and telling a story over a number of panels that a patient can then follow through. And like you said, they're the hero of the story. Because what was the thing that was in uh, quotation marks? Foot. Foot freedom plan. Foot freedom plan. Yeah. So the story brand is, is the foot freedom plan is the, is like the secret source. And that's the thing they're following over that period of time. Whereas if we go to most podiatry websites, it's just chunky bits of information, nothing actually relate, relates, and it doesn't tell a story as you go through it. It's five different right. stories all thrown in together. And the power of story, as you and I both know, um, because it has been beaten into us for years, <laughs> right? Our, our friend and mentor, Dave Fries, yeah. um, who is a brilliant marketer and uh, shares with us lots of things, but you want to tell stories. And so on your website, you want to have a story about your most successful patients for each one of your service areas. And you can tell the story. You don't need it. It's great if you can get a testimonial from them, but you want to be able to write this story out about, okay, so, you know, Nancy Smith came into my practice and she, and she could barely walk and she was crying and she was so upset uh, because the pain had just gotten so bad that she can barely walk. And she was, a, she's a dancer her whole life, you know, and her husband came in and he's, you know, He's ready to dance and he wants his wife back so they can go, they go dancing like they do, like they did every weekend. And so we, we did, we took her in and we did the, we did the foot freedom plan or whatever plan you have to make people walk again. And, um, and we did this and we did this and you get specific about the things that you did and a nice little testimonial from her and voila, she's cured uh, even better. Because we, I'm telling this because this actually happened in Peter Wishney, and we have yeah. this video on his website. Um, of of we've got the video of her and her husband dancing, and that's kind of the end of the story, and it's a great story. And people will be like, "That's what I want." Way more than you just like listing, you know, heel pain technicalities and how you fix it and how great you are and all your accolades. But nobody really cares about that. I mean, other doctors might care about that. And if you want to be employed by another practice, they might care about that. Uh, and some people will check out, you know, those, your accolades, but those go on your bio page. And the other thing that I just want to say about this, that design that we were showing is, as I said, everything is built in panels. And so those panels can be reused and edited in DSS. And so... Andrew has the power to go in there and edit all that himself and change them out. So he might have a different plan, one, two, three, four, for a different condition that he treats or a different service that he does that he can go in and edit and add that in there. So he has the power to do a lot of updates to his own website, not just adding content, but actually changing the look and look and feel of it. I built DSS before WordPress existed. If I had started the company after WordPress was around, I might have used it. Yeah. But I wrote, I wrote DSS back before there was any CMSs. There was anything like that. And um, I was building websites statically with Dreamweaver notes. I was going crazy. So I couldn't keep up. I had to build a dynamic platform so I could update the websites easily. Mm. But what That's I like started it. What I like about how it's evolved over the years since I've known you for, for the 10 years and I've seen the, the websites change, it's the passion behind what you do and knowing that how important it is the marketing behind the podiatrist. Like you said, you, you can't just re rely on your reputation or I've got 15 degrees or all these qualifications. And that might be great when you're with a room full of other podiatrists and you can all pat each other on the back and go, you're awesome. But for the patient, people have got to realize, or podiatrists got to realize, it's all about the patient. It's not about you. Your website is for them. It's not about blowing your own trumpet. Yeah, I think yeah. your websites have nailed that perfectly, just about it's all about the patient. It's not about you. You're, you're just providing a service. Well, and, and here's the thing about, yeah, you're providing a service. What services that do you want to provide? Because as a yeah. businessman, 
as a businessman, obviously you want to make money. We're not talking about don't like, we want you to make money. We want you to, and that's the point of the website is your website is your best marketing vehicle for making money. Mm. And, um, and if you do it right, it will bring you tons of great new patients. For instance, um, are you marketing orthotics? Look at doc, like Dr. Scholz is like eating everybody's lunch. Why? Because podiatrists are not marketing their own orthotics. Oh, People know. don't know that you do that because you have it buried in your website and you never remind them that you have that through your email. You have their email. Do you have those good feet stores in America? You do, don't yeah. you? you? go through a start. Yeah. yeah. So I've seen so many podiatrists will post something online and they'll complain about the good feet stores. Oh, our association should be doing this. Our association should be doing that. And I'm like, well, why don't you do it? Why don't, if, yeah. you, if you do it in your area and every other podiatrist who complains about it does it in their area, then maybe the association will go, oh, maybe we'll start promoting orthotics as well. And you will beat the good feet store. But all the podiatrists sit back quietly going, oh, no, I don't, I don't like marketing or but then and they'll complain about is coming yeah they'll complain it's about the ones that, that do market right the 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 podiatrists that are marketing orthotics in their area are getting their business they're getting yeah. orthotics oh hell yeah they're doing it right and they're making money and there another thing is getting more cash pay services which you can do if you market it right so you know it, you want somebody to come in and get laser treatment, it's cash. You want to get more cash services. You want to market that correctly to them. Get rid of all the objections up front in the email that's marketing this service. Let them know what the plan is. The plan's going to cost this much money. It's, yeah. it's not covered by insurance, but let them, don't surprise them. It's up to them to make that decision, but you need to build the value of getting that service done. And the way to do it is first you attract them to whatever that service is with your website and your content of your website and your SEO. And then you need to be able to convert them. So they give you, they either book an appointment right then, which is the best thing that you want, yeah. or they're going to give you their name and address and email and phone number. So you can follow up with them or they're going to give, if you have a book or an offer, you're going to get that. The point of getting that is not to just take it and throw it in the trash or not to just take it and, and do nothing with it. The point of those is to market to them. It's your responsibility as their doctor to remind them about things they need to come in for. If if they saw if if you saw them for one thing, it's likely they need other things, right? Mm. And so you want to like constantly be sharing the other services that you do. If you don't do that, if you don't remind them that you are their podiatrist, they will go somewhere else. It's, I reckon it's almost like a disjustice. I think if if you have a skill set, you have a, a foot treatment plan, whatever you want to call it. You, you have the, the ability to actually get somebody out of pain and you keep it to yourself. You don't actually market it and tell the public that you can do this. I think you're, 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 you're nuts. You're doing a disservice to your community because yeah. instead of you telling them that you can do this, you're saying to them, hey, why don't you just go to the Good Feet store because they market it and say that they can help people. Right. They're marketing <laughs> big time. And they're very expensive. And they like, yes. they, they're they very expensive and they have hard salespeople in there. And they're putting them on a plan, by the way. They are selling a plan. And so that's, you can do marketing against, you don't want to go to the Good Feet store. You don't want to go to, doc, here's why you don't want to go come to me and th that should be in the email that goes out and not once. Yeah. What did I say? Seven times. I'm not saying seven times in a row, but you know, remind them frequently. Yeah. Email every week at so, least. So Tom, I'm looking at the time. I always enjoy yeah, talking we, with you. We could, well, we could talk for hours, but we, I do, as I we do, do have to, <laughs> I, I <just laughs> do. You're my, my, my Starbucks pumpkin latte spiced buddy. I tell you, I look forward to them every year. I get home and I, I get sad. And, yeah, uh, I just had one yesterday. I think I need to go get one. Yeah, because we don't have Starbucks where we are in Cairns. But I'm going. Yeah, you know, when I go down to Brisbane, they do have them there. So I I do get a fix. And some people might listen to this and go, "Oh, but 
Starbucks is not the best coffee. Yeah, but it's really consistent and I like it, so I don't care. Yeah, I don't know if it's the best coffee either, but uh, it's those consistent. pumpkin spice cold brews are delicious. Oh, yeah. I was, I was listening to this uh, guy, uh, Anthony Lionheart Smith, on the podcast. He's a UFC fighter. And they were talking about their favorite oh, takeaways. Cool. And he said, oh, he said, oh, my favorite takeaway is Taco Bell. And they went, oh, you are Taco kidding. Bell. Yeah, they said, Taco Bell? He goes, yeah, because it's consistently shit. He said, I just <laughs> know that every time I go there, I know exactly what I'm getting. There's never a good day. It's always exactly the same. It's very similar well, the yep. other fast food place. Uh, sometimes, it's, sometimes you might get a good burger, sometimes you don't. He said, but Taco Bell, consistently shit food. So I know exactly what I'm getting. And I just thought that was actually really funny. I'm not saying Starbucks, Starbucks. I actually, I like it. I like the vibe in there. I like the feel. And maybe because with Starbucks, because when we're in Arizona together, there's like an emotional connection between you and I and Brian, for example, a few of the rest of us around that Starbucks place. Well, it's right there. It's so convenient. But I think I'm just thinking about that there. And then people might listen to this and thinking, oh, you guys are a bit odd. But this is the emotional connection you want to have with the patients in your clinic. Hey, we did. We, it's we go get Starbucks after we go after we've been on a two and a half mile walk, right? Yeah. Around around town, so you know we're we're not we sweating. <laughs> you know, we're talking about stuff, but then that's a nice ending to the to the walk. But I think that emotional connection that we all have now with Starbucks in that particular area. And every time I have a Starbucks anywhere, I think of you and Brian and, and Lonnie, who doesn't like pumpkin spice latte. And I send you pictures of when I get mine. I know. Just so you can know I'm but, enjoying one. But I think if you can create that same emotional connection with your patients in your practice somehow, that when they think of your practice, they think of podiatry, you're the first thing that comes to mind and it's a happy thought, you you will kill it in your area. Just absolutely kill it. And you did that with your practice. You know, I'll say that um, those, and I'm sure you got pictures. I mean, like, I remember seeing pictures on the website and whatnot. It was very colorful. It was very cool. Um, like, who wouldn't want to go to the podiatrist to oh, go see you? And I like, love clinic. You know, yeah, <laughs> you, you made it a great place to go. Um, and so it wasn't, what you know, boring and like, it's the doctor, you know, it's not, it's like, you know, it was a, it was a, a treat to go there. It was funny. We were, the other day we were at an event the other day and there was about yeah 30 people there and all these different people, they all know each other through different, different ways. We came into the room and when I looked around the room, I reckon more than half the room I knew because they were all patients over the years that I didn't even wow. know that these people all knew each other. But when I looked at this group and they're a, you know, a bit of a, high income earning group, it made me realize my clinic attracted a certain type of patient. And those patients preferred other patients that are very similar to them. So I think exactly. if you make, if, if you make your place, uh, your particular destination, something where people want to come to, and they are proud to tell other people that's where they go, and they're proud to refer other people. So yeah, you, you can't help but win. So Tom, we better wrap it up. I was just looking at the time. It's been fantastic yep. talking to you. So I want to thank you for coming on the Podiatry Legends podcast, sharing your wisdom, sharing your knowledge in, in this particular area. And I hope everybody that listens to this has taken a, a number of pointers away. And if people want to reach out to you, how do they get hold of you? What's the best way? Fosterwebmarketing.com is the website. Um, and if you want to shoot me an email, if you have questions, if you'd like me to do an analysis of your site and your marketing, um, you want to talk about it? It's Tom at fosterwebmarketing.com. That's my personal email. Um, and you can shoot me a note and just reference this that you saw this podcast or listen to this podcast so I know what yeah. we're going to be talking about. Yeah. And Tom can and Tyson, Tom, Tom you, can then brother. put a credit for me of uh Starbucks exactly toll breweries exactly. when I'm over there next year. There you go. Thank you so much, brother, for having me. And it is great to see you and great talking to you. It just feels like we're talking about stuff like we usually do i oh, know it's great and um i will talk to you soon i always say tom I, I i just love chatting with you so it's um yeah it's been fun so i'll talk to you again soon yeah, as well fine. okay bye okay